I guess you go from the PowerPoint because since the introduction was senior. So hi everybody. Um, my name is Ciara. And my name is Sabrina. And um, um, just so everyone knows, um, this video is being recorded so it can go on the Title IX YouTube channel. So if you don't feel comfortable like turning on your camera, like that's okay. So yeah, welcome to the event. Who this? We'll get started. So introductions. Um, if any, if everyone wants to just drop in the chat, um, introducing themselves, like your your major, um, your year, and anything else you would want to share with us. If you want to do your introductions out loud, you can also. So um, I can go first since, you know. So my name is Ciara. I am a senior social work major. And um, I'll tell you a fun fact. The fun fact is that I sing with the gospel choir. Um, and I'll go. Uh, my name is Sabrina Vega. I am um, a human development and family relations major. And I am currently a senior. And a fun fact about me would be is that I'm a lefty. Ooh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so if Hi, I everyone. Yep. Hi, everyone. My name is Aisha Nadler. I am the Violence Prevention Education and Outreach Coordinator here at SUNY Plattsburgh. Um, but in terms of what Sabrina was asking, I'm also currently studying for my master's in student affairs and higher education. I don't remember what else you said. A fun fact, yeah. Fun fact. Um, a fun fact is that I would like to go skydiving or hiking, um, like a high peak, before the end of this year. Hey, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm screaming. I'm outside. <laughs> so my Wi-Fi is going to cut in and out. But... I'm Kay Shanair. I am a senior um, human development and family relation major as well. Um, I feel like this. I rep the Bronx hard. Like, if you're not from the Bronx, where are you from? <laughs> uh, does anybody want to go next? Um, we just said, um, can you introduce yourself, your major, your year, and a fun fact? Myself is. What you said? I can't hear you. It's a little muffled. Anybody else? No? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> oh, all right. Hi, butterfly. Hi, can you see me? I can't see myself. Yeah, we can see you. Okay. So, uh, my name's Butterfly. I am not a student, but I got my undergraduate degree in communications. I got my graduate degree in mental health counseling. And a fun fact about me is I have triplet daughters. Okay. So next we're gonna just share our contact information. If you wanna like reach out after the presentation is over. Um, we're also gonna give it again at the end, if just in case you don't remember how to contact us. So my name is Ciara, like I said before. Um, I am the LGBTQ plus resource committee intern. Um, and these are my office hours listed. And um, this is my email. 
and my name is Sabrina Vega. I am the current president of the Plattsburgh College of Hermandad de Sigma Iota Alpha Incorporada, and I just provided my personal email if you had any questions, as well as my organization's chapter's email. Okay, so the first question we have here is, what does identity mean to you? So if anybody wants to answer, I mean, I could answer first, you know, break the ice a little bit. <laughs> so um, to me, identity is just like who I am as a person. So it can be from, it can go from like my race to my sex, to my religion, and like, you know, all of these different things that make me who I am. So just adding on to Ciara, I, I personally feel the same way. I feel like identity is whatever you wanna, what, what you feel you relate closest to. So like for me personally, like um, my culture, cultural identity is like what I relate to very closely. Would anybody else like to share? or even say what they identify as or who they identify as? Um, I personally really, re um, what was it? I f I'm sorry, I forgot. Resonate, I guess, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> um, with the fact that I'm a black woman first, um, then comes the rest of my identities as, well, the rest of my ethnicity, ethnicities and then comes my sexual orientation and then from there on everything else okay does anybody else want to share no okay <laughs> um so now we have this identity wheel it does not list all of the identities but it does list most so some of the identities are age sexual orientation race, gender, ethnicity, um, physical abilities and qualities. And there's like a whole bunch more, but we're gonna be focusing on gender identity. So before we get into gender identity, would anyone like to share more about themselves? Like anything more like in relating to the identity wheel and if No? Okay. I mean I can tell uh, I, I can tell okay. Y'all can hear me good? Yeah. Uh, um, I identify myself as a Latino man. Uh, I guess the color of the I can't hear you. Can y'all hear me now, buddy? Yeah. How about now? You hear me better? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I said my pronouns are him, he, and his. Did that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess we can just go on to the next one. So gender identity versus gender expression. Um, gender identity, an individual's internal sense of being a man, woman, both, neither, or something else. Since gender identity is internal, one's gender identity is not necessarily visible to others. And gender expression is the way in which a person expresses their gender identity, typically through their appearance, dress, and behavior. So, Finding your gender identity. Yeah. So gender dysphoria, description of emotional or mental dis dis dissonance between one's desired co concept of their body and what their body actually is, especially in reference to body parts, features that do not align or promote to one's gender identity. A term used in psychiatry psychiatry to refer to um, incongruence between an individual's designated birth sex and their gender identity with marked dis 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 dis
a lot of people believe that gender dysphoria is a negative thing, but it's not. Um, yeah. So would anybody like to guess how many gender identities there are? Anybody? Ten. Okay, ten. Anybody else? Infinity. <laughs> okay, infinity. <laughs> Anybody else? No? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, so there are no set number. There is no set number. Um, so we have some identity, some of the gender identities listed, but since there's no set number, we're going to just name a few. So we could do the next one. So to name a few of these gender identities, we have cisgender, transgender, girl or woman, man or boy, non-binary, gender fluid, gender neutral, and then we have many more. So just know if you have any questions, like throughout, you can always put it in the chat box so that we can like answer your questions or like have a discussion on the questions that you are asking. All right, folks, here we go. A romaine and kale salad with avocado, cucumber, shishito peppers, and four kinds of cheese. Sprinkled in balsamic straight from Italy. Wow. In my day, salads only had two ingredients, a rock-hard wedge of iceberg lettuce and a stinky old dried-up tomato. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm going to have to eat fast. Alex is stopping by in a few minutes to work on our robotics project. Alex, is that the girl with that weird dog or the boy with the hat with the wings that flap? No, Uncle Jay. This is Alex. Oh, okay. I remember. A very nice young... Hmm, come to think of it. Well, is Alex a boy or a girl? Actually, Alex doesn't define themselves as boy or girl. What else is there? Back in your day, most people understood the world in terms of just boys and girls. But now, we know gender is more complex than that. Wait, aren't we just talking about whether you're born with a hmm <laughs> or a hee <laughs> When you're born, your sex is assigned in a medical way, but the sex listed on your birth certificate may not necessarily match your gender identity. Gender identity is a person's inner experience of who they are in terms of gender, their deep personal sense of being male, female, a blend of both, or neither. And while many people have a gender identity that's the same as their assigned birth sex of female or male, that's not always the case because gender exists on a spectrum. Like transgender, which means a person whose gender identity is not consistent with their assigned birth sex. Non-binary, which means a person whose identity doesn't fall in the category of either male or female. And genderqueer or gender fluid, which means a person who does not identify themselves as having a specific gender at all. Does gender identity have to do with being straight or gay? Actually, no. Gender identity has to do with the way you feel about yourself, while sexual orientation is based on the way you feel toward others, the people you may or may not be attracted to. You know, I really like Alex, and I can tell they're a good friend to you, but I'm still pretty confused about all of this. That's okay. You don't have to fully understand someone to respect them. To start, try not to make any assumptions about a person's gender, and use the name and pronouns that they ask you to. Above all, be a friend or ally for people of all gender identities. That's right, Mom. Oh, Alex is here. Come on in. Hey, everyone. Oh, hey, Alex. Care for some salad? The balsamic's right from Italy, you know. So did anyone take away anything specifically from the video?
have a question. Yes. Yeah. You hear me? Yes. Okay. So, like, I just wanted to know basically, like, is is there no set number, um, of like ways to identify yourself to encourage people expressing their identity? And then also, I just wanted to give an example because I remember last time, I mean, last semester in my um, off campus house with like some of my housemates and friends, they had an argument. And so you had like half the room basically sticking up for, you know, the freedom to express whatever identity you want. And then half the room used the example of not being able to, I guess, describe yourself as a table as a reason to why it made no sense. So how would you feel about that as well? I mean, it's for anybody, not not just the people presenting. I'm just asking questions. I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. What was your first question? Um, like, would you say that there's no set number to just express? Um, I mean, to encourage people to express their identity. Um, I think you can really identify whatever you feel like, whoever you feel like you are, like. If they want to identify as like um like a male or a woman, but like their assigned sex at birth wasn't like a male, and they want to be a woman, like they can do that. I don't know if I'm explaining this right, but I feel as though anybody can identify as anything they want because they are who they are. Yeah, like adding on to what you said, like there shouldn't be no any limit to like how a person wants to identify themselves or like you shouldn't feel limited because of what other people are going to think about them. The way you feel is the way you identify yourself. I think to that, to that end also, it's what's the harm, right? What's the harm if someone does something that may not be what you're used to? Like, is it going to be really hard for you as an individual, um, or what harm to you is it just to respect? So in a lot of ways, um, and I've, I've personally heard that argument about, oh, well, someone can just call themselves a table or a chair, right? Um, and in a lot of ways, that's a way to dehumanize the fact that people do have other gender identities and what you may be used to. Um, so really to highlight in a way that it's, it's not harming you and it's taking nothing out of your day and out of your time to just respect whatever someone's pronouns are um, or their gender identity. Uh, so if someone wants to be labeled a, a table or a chair, so be it. Um, but in a lot of ways, those are reasons that people come up with that are unrealistic in order to dehumanize those who do identify differently, which is wrong. Yeah, I like what you said, Zayeja. Like that's, it's more about respect and respecting what a person wants to identify as and not just like shaming or putting people down um so one of the comments says that the video was really cute and they love the way that the video was explained so yeah that's why i thought it would be we thought it would be a good idea to show the video because it explained it much better than yeah Um, so um, just to talk a little bit about um, organizations that really help um, people feel comfortable, um, we have um, One Heartland, and One Heartland creates different camps to help youth facing different challenges. Um, so the camps are a way for them to kind of get away from everything that they're feeling and de-stress in a way. Um, so one of the camps that I decided to speak about was um, Family Camp True Colors. So the Camp True Colors experience um, is a LGBTQ plus um, camp where um, youth go away with their family and it kind of creates an environment where they feel like their family is accepting of their identity and um, they have like different activities and um, classes that not only help um, them feel comfortable in their own shoes, but also help family members become accepting of it. Um, 
and I feel like that's pretty cool and important to have an environment like this for um, youth um, that's now available because I know there sometimes there aren't a lot of resources or a lot of ways for um, youth to get to feel comfortable around people and get to express themselves however they want to without feeling like they're being judged. Um, so like I mentioned, like this camp is, um, it has um, cabins and it kind of gives each family a way for them to feel comfortable while also like having the child feel comfortable. So not all activities are done with the family, which is a plus because they, this gives the um, youth time to kind of debrief from their families. And if there is things that they don't want to say in front of their family, they can say it and not feel like they have to hold back what they're saying because their families are around. Um, this camp is in Minnesota, and that just kind of pushed me to thinking that there should be more um, resources like this available um, for our youth because unfortunately there aren't and kind of pushing camps like this um, will help, you know, kind of create a safe environment for, for youth. And then um, does anybody know what resources there is in Plattsburgh available? Anybody, everybody? No, that's fine. So some of the resources available are the Trevor Project. Um, they have a, a lifeline number, um, the Trans Lifeline. They also have a hotline number. But the two local ones here in Plattsburgh are Planned Parenthood, which is downtown Plattsburgh, and the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Plattsburgh. Um, if you want to reach any of these places, um, their information is there. So if you have any questions afterward, if you have any questions about these resources afterward, you can always reach out to us and we'll be happy to give you all of these resources. So once again, this is our contact information. Um, for questions and concerns. And then we wanted to ask if you had any questions. For the presenters, I have a quick question. What was the key thing that you all learned from your, pre from your presentation today? Um, I feel like the key thing that I learned today was um, kind of like what Zaija touched up on a little bit, like it's more about respect. And like, I feel like I got to dig deeper into like gender identity and how it's about like what the person wants to, what they see themselves, sees what they see themselves as. And it's not more about, oh, what everybody else thinks about them. It's what you see when you look at yourself and how you feel about yourself internally. So I feel like this presentation kind of um, pushed me to dig deeper and like, just learn about it. I agree. Um, I also didn't really know much about gender identity. When I thought of identity, I just thought identity was just identity. Like I didn't know that there was like gender identity, like sexual identity, whatever, um, not um, expression and um, like race and stuff like that. I just thought like identity was identity. I didn't know it was like broken up. And I think something interesting to add on to what you're saying is that all the other identities are affected by each other so like your gender identity and your your race affect each other like mm -hmm. so i think that's interesting to me you know, like like the identity wheel has a lot of meaning and if you kind of like look at look at it and intertwine all of them they kind of connect and like affect each other a lot right um, does anybody else have any questions? I don't have a question and this wind is, is going crazy right now, I'm sorry. Um, but I, I wanted to say that I really appreciated that we talked on the respect thing. It's not really, it doesn't hurt anybody to respect somebody's pronouns to just say, hey, okay. Because I, I, I've been in situations where I had to too. I will not have to, but I wanted to 
respect their pronouns and it was made that much of a difference to the person themselves. So, yeah, that's all I have to say. Um, in the beginning, we forgot to share our pronouns. So my pronouns is she, her, and hers. And mine are she, her, her and hers. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so if any, if nobody has any more questions, um, we just want to say thank you for coming to our event. And we have a forum, um, a forum here to fill out to give us feedback on how we did for this event, just to hear what you think. Um, so if you can fill out the form, that would be great. Um, and if you can't get to the form, you can put your email in the chat so that the form can be emailed to you. But if nobody has any more questions, just thank you again and good night. Thank y'all. Good night. Good night.